Hi everyone! Summer is upon us and Linnea and I are going to take a small vacation. As you may have noticed by now, since our return from hiatus, we've been producing Men at Women independently with the generous help of Podstarter, who have allowed us to use their recording space. We love making Men at Women, but having to take on the extra work of editing and producing, in addition to everything else we were already doing, makes it a little more taxing. So for July 21st and 28th, there will be no new episodes of Men at Women. Boo. We know. But we will make our big return August 4th with a brand new episode. Also, from July 21st to July 28th, our website, minutewomenpodcast.ca, will be down for some renovations. However, please keep your eyes peeled on the Minute Women social media pages. You can expect some super exciting news during our little vacation. We have been keeping some big changes under wraps, and we're excited to share them with you. So, no episodes for the rest of July, but we will be back August 4th with brand new content. All right, back to your regularly scheduled programming. everyone welcome back to the minute women podcast my name is grace and i'm linnea and we get to be in the studio oh it's so exciting <laughs> it's such a beautiful studio i tried to i posted a video to our instagram today and i was really proud of it and it was super cute but it came in three parts and like the <laughs> third part i was like oh i want to tag us in it so i like deleted it because i thought it automatically saved and then when i went to repost it it's just gone and so the cutest part of the video that has mine and grace's faces in it isn't there so to everyone <laughs> who watched that it was supposed to be a lot cuter and i'm sorry <laughs> i'll try and do better next time yeah we'll have to do like a photo shoot after this to just uh yes. show off the beautiful pod starter studio uh, it's so pretty it's cool. It's in the north end of Halifax, and it very much fits that vibe. Yeah. There's, like, exposed brick and <laughs> Ikea furniture, and it's... But, like, the top-tier Ikea furniture. Oh, the top-tier. <laughs> like, an Ikea rug. Like, that shit's Plush. not cheap. Plush yeah. rug. Yeah. yeah, no, it's very strange walking into the studio. So, I mean, if you're in Halifax and you need a place to record, I mean, pause our studio, place to go. Um, but Pick Grace up. Yeah, hit me up. Not really. It's not mine. (laughs) But walking in here, like you walk into the office and you're like, oh, yeah, cool. And then when you walk into a properly soundproof studio, it's just like, oh, that's what acoustics are. It's like, oh, that's just like it's so quiet. The striking reality of how much noise you are bombarded with on a regular basis is just taken away. It's so like, oh, my goodness. It sounds so good. (laughs) It sounds so good. Yeah, we have two studios here and one of them uh, has been called the Scream Room for a little while because yeah, you, you can just go in there and like scream it out and you're not gonna bother anybody no nope. it's beautiful go in there have a good cry <laughs> also this has been pride month june and we we don't last year we did our i think the only dedicated heritage minute to pride currently yeah. um and so we did that last year and we had our pal theo on the podcast to mm-hmm. chat with us because he was in that heritage minute i can't believe that was a year ago that's so no that was like the 19th episode or something oh, that's wild <laughs> Look how far we've come <laughs> yeah so we did the only pride heritage minute last year to commemorate and so we didn't really have anything like that this year so this year we put out a pride t-shirt yes. instead so i mean if you want to pass some coin along to your favorite little podcast but also to like rep it with pride yeah it's capital actually p a super cool it's a super cool design grace designed it it's a rainbow design totally linnea's concept though oh well thank you um <laughs> rainbow design i mean not really an original pride design but uh <laughs> no. but it looks really cute especially on the mugs um i know they turned out so well they on turned the out so cute just the way it kind of like takes up half um Mm -hmm. it's just it's really cute you have to go check it out and see because uh it might be my favorite merch to date it's really fun i love it controversial opinion it looks really good on the brown t-shirt oh interesting it gives it kind of like a retro flair oh yeah instead of like crisp black or crisp white putting it on a brown just kind of like you know and i can't say i have a brown (laughs) t-shirt that's not (laughs) most of us can't say (laughs) color i uh, particularly gravitate to uh, especially for t- for tops, um, <laughs> so maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to have a brown T shirt. Brown Join on brown me. on brown. <laughs> Join me and uh, bring back brown this summer. 
<laughs> bring back brown that's gonna be the color of the summer i love that when they put out the pantone oh, color of the year the two colors i guess sometimes yeah. sometimes it's two sometimes it's one it's weird yeah and it's just like this color will be the i just want one year it to be like brown yeah not nothing nothing fancy just no. brown that's it exactly the truest just like, yeah brown. just like one shade one <laughs> color not like dandelion in the wind with chamomile yellow <laughs> like what is that <laughs> What kind of color is that? I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking a, like a buttery yellow. It's probably pink. <laughs> I, as a child, I was obsessed with naming colors. Oh. And I would name them all after myself. <laughs> um, so like there was like whenever it was like a really hot pink sunset, I wanted to be I wanted to be coy. So I didn't call it like Grace Red. I called it Brianna because that's my first name. Yes. I've always gone by my middle name. It, don't ask. It's That's a thing. It's just a thing. And that's my name. But I was like. I'm going to name this after myself, but I don't want people to think I'm, like, full of myself. So I'm Who naming... Who are these people? Just everyone. Okay. I'd be like, oh, yeah, that color? That's Brianna Fire. And That's what like, I named oh, it. And oh. it, <laughs> my mom was... It's only my mom. She was like, cool. <laughs> I had a, a legit dream to be a nail polish namer. Ooh. I thought that would have been the coolest job. Especially OPI colors, because yeah. um, they're named by... I guess the... I don't know this for sure, but... <laughs> um, I had a I, one of my best friends, Kaya. Um, shout out to Kaya. Her mom, Nalangina, another one of my best friends. <laughs> shout, shout out, out to Nalangina. Nalangina. <laughs> uh, she Nalangina is like a nail polish. Like she was like my mom never like painted her nails mm. or like did anything like that. Like just yeah. didn't like the look of it. And Nalangina like her, she had like drawers of beautiful like OPI colors. That Something she'd about it. At salons. Oh my gosh, just like so nice. <laughs> and she always like she was like and this color is like do you like it? She's still like if she gets a manicure, she'll send me a picture because <laughs> she's very much like the color of the year, like what mm. color looks best. But OPI has something there's a Susie in there somewhere. I don't know if it's the creator or oh, if it's okay. like one of their head colorists. I don't know what it's called, <laughs> but it seems like when they're having a hard time coming up with colors, um it'll be like Susie at the beach or like Susie does this or like whatever so it's like not every color but it's probably like I'd say like one in 30 Is has a like Susie doing has a Susie something. reference but there was one that I don't remember this so distinctly because Kaya's mom had it and it was called Susie says da and it was just d-a-h with an exclamation point and that's what the color was called and I was like dude I can do way better than that like <laughs> Susie says da like so so what was what was the color? It was nice. It was like a <laughs> pinky. It was like a very um a very neutral shade, like a pinky kind of almost like a pinky taupe with a little bit of a sheen. Like okay. a very nice like everyday kind of color. Okay. But and I guess you get to that point where you have like 140 everyday colors and you're just like <laughs> duh. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> but yeah, I always thought that would be a awesome job. That would be really cool. Yeah. yeah, definitely like naming any any kind of like cosmetics naming. Though yeah. sometimes like I just find like the hypersexualization of cosmetic oh, names. Yeah. Like sometimes it's funny and sometimes I'm like why we got to name a blush orgasm. Yeah. And it's like the number one blush forever yeah. for like 10 years this yeah. is the blush you needed to have and yeah, it's called it's orgasm how it's are you supposed true. to buy that at that? sephora at the think, age of 12 is that nars yeah yeah nars orgasm it's a beautiful color too and it's got like this gold shimmer in it it's yeah it's a really nice blush i grew like... up on youtube makeup because my mom not that she doesn't wear makeup but it was definitely a different like it's yeah. a different era oh, for sure. of of learning makeup i totally learned makeup from watching online oh yeah and i would watch these like NUAs and they like do their oh, like makeup with and then they're like this is they like put it up and then they put their hand behind it and like this <laughs> I've is my never NARS orgasm <laughs> I think it's to make the camera focus I guess but it's always you're right it's like they hold up the lipstick and then they like put their hand behind it and like push it <laughs> forward and I'm like you didn't like if you put the lipstick on your hand so I can see the color I'd get it yes, but give you, me swatches you're just holding up a bottle I actually just did a crazy thing mm -hmm. I've decided that I'm I'm not old I'm not old <laughs> 
but I'm turning 27. You just had your, you just, well, you just turned 27. Yeah. I just, I just had a 27th birthday. I'm like not old, but, uh, but I'm, I'm getting closer to 30 <laughs> and I've decided that I really need to take some effort into my skin. So not oh. makeup, but my skin. And so I was actually, um, slightly inspired by another pod starter, um, producer and host of her own podcast uh sarah mclennan who hosts the amazing podcast intoxicated it's hilarious she also does a lot of bonus content so i recommend you go follow her intoxicated podcast she's really funny she's she's really great she is also the like the keeper of knowledge here at podstarter like (laughs) for all the other junior producers she's the one who's been around before like all of us been so around she, the block it's not her first rodeo she, this is not her first rodeo she knows exactly what she's doing she's like she can tell you where like anything is you're yeah. just like you're like where's this file and she's like here it is <laughs> yeah it's always good to have one in the group um but she went on a little like skincare journey and like posted <laughs> all her stuff she bought from sephora i didn't go quite as hard as her she did she had a haul uh but i did go and i like purged the like sales section and like did my research and it all started because a friend told me about this incredible acne like resolver like a pimple like gets rid of your pimples like Like the sticker in eight hours no it's called it's by kate somerville who's like a skincare um and it's called eradicate someone who likes to name things after herself all her stuff has her name oh, in it. Oh, eradicate. Yeah, exactly. It's the coolest shit. It looks like kombucha. It's got like a little ball thing in the bottom and then it's like all liquid kind of surrounded it and then it tells you not to shake it because God, you want to shake it because it's it just, it's like this glob of like cream and you just want to shake it up, but don't do it. Don't shake it. It says right on it like three times. It's like, do not shake. Don't shake it. You're like, but I want it so bad. I want it so bad. But anyway, you stick like a Q-tip in it, you put it on and I have to say, it's actually insane. Like, it worked. I don't mm. know what's in it, but it's, like, liquid gold. So I bought that. But then I was like, oh, like, 50 more dollars and I have free shipping? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, I must. And so. It's irresponsible if I don't. I know. So I purchased a couple skincare things. No actual makeup. And that's that's where I'm in my life. I love Concerned that. about skincare. Welcome to Liquid Courage, the podcast where I, Amanda Pereira, sit down with a fellow female artist that I admire. Hi, Amanda. Hello, Amanda. Hi, how are you, Amanda? And ask them the questions I've never had the guts to ask them before. Why do you think people are intimidated by you? What do you wish you knew, like, earlier in your career? Do you ever have the fear of, like, being forgotten that you're a performer first? Sounds scary? Well, it is. I'm so nervous I'm going to have to pee. I feel like my hands are so sweaty. So I use a little Liquid Courage in the form of their favorite drink. I made this so strong. Cheers! We're drinking gin in the morning. We cheers, chat, and connect as I attempt to soak up all the wisdom these women have to offer. We have to be creating on our own if we want to keep creating. Who benefits the most from me feeling shit about myself? White men. Whatever place you are in, you're allowed to like show up as you are. I wish I knew that to just follow my in- intuition was the right way to go about things. A lot of people don't do the things that they want to do because they're scared. Ooh. Yes, that was beautiful. I don't know why I'm waiting so long to feel like I deserve to be at the table. I should just like ask people to dinner. Oh my God, mine didn't even pop. It's an open bar. We're drinking an open bar. I'm gonna feel so good at the end of this. The Liquid Courage podcast is available anywhere you get your podcasts. And to find out more about the show, head to liquidcouragepodcast.com. For updates and fun bonus content, head to at Liquid Courage Podcast on Instagram or at Liquid Courage on Twitter. And if you want some even more exclusive content, check us out on Patreon. Cheers. So I think you went first last time. So I'll go yes. first this time. Okay. Uh, so I want to talk about a Nova Scotian Ooh. who is not dead. <laughs> very much alive. She is very much alive. Um, and actually from here in Halifax. Okay. Um, okay. Do you want to play like a guessing game? Like I'll give you some clues. Yes, I do. Yes, I do, Linnea. Do you, are you confident that I knew who, know who they are? Uh, I think you'll at least be able to say like, oh, that girl, I already told you it's a girl. So, oh, that girl who does that. Um, okay. So she's a girl born in 1995. So a year younger than me, a year older than you. She's a gymnast? Yes. Emily Black or Emily? Close. So close. I knew that you'd get there. Do you want to try? Yes. Her real name's Elizabeth. 
Ellie. Ellie. Ellie yes. Black. Okay. Ellie Black. <laughs> yeah. So, so Ellie Black. So Ellie Black, uh, yeah, she was born in September of 1995, and she's a Canadian artistic gymnast, mm-hmm. which, like, I mean, gymnastics are really cool to watch. Like, it's always one that I've enjoyed in the Olympics because they just do crazy shit. Yeah. Um, and it's like, they're so strong. They're these little humans. I mean, you're they're pr- tiny people who yeah. are just like, have the strength of like oh it's insane of like a football player oh it's it's absolutely <laughs> insane and um my mom was a was a pretty competitive gymnast when she was young oh really and never wanted that life for me so she like <laughs> steered me away from it she's like it was a lot and like took away my childhood um she has no trauma whatsoever <laughs> everything's uh, fine yeah but ellie black is making waves she's a two-time olympian uh she's never won at the olympics oh okay um and how old is she She's, she's a year older than me. Yeah. So she's like 26. See, people like... <laughs> Not even. She's 25 right now. She'll be 26. And that's crazy. She's been to two Olympics already. Yeah. That means she was going when she was well, like, a teenager? 16. 16 is kind of like... I think you have to be 16. There's been a lot of scandals in gymnastics of like yeah. countries putting in really young um, people. So the thing about gymnastics is that you... It's like good to be tiny... Yeah. but strong and the thing is is that as you get older it's so hard on your body that yeah. it doesn't last really long as a career so you probably get like two maybe three olympics and then you're done and that's all before you're 20 yeah and then it's just like now i need a whole new career <laughs> yeah and it's like how do you how do you navigate that uh so yeah ellie is 25 right now and she's five foot two which is like pretty standard height for a gymnast she mm-hmm. would fit right in with us <laughs> um and yeah, she she started at Halifax Ulta Gymnastics, which my little cousin Evie, shout Aww. out to Eve, she's seven, yeah, seven. Eve, um, Eve uh, does gymnastics at Ulta. That's and cute. And so she's just a little, she just started gymnastics a couple of years ago and she loves it. <laughs> and uh, I just think that's cool that it's it's such a local, such a local thing. It's like, yeah. you don't think of, you know, Nova Scotia as being a place where a, a like an Olympian has gone to do gymnastics. Yeah, maybe some other like niche sports, but yeah, I think rowing, with rowing, curling, maybe. Yeah, but like, like if it's gymnastics, I feel like you always have to. You the expectation is you have to go to like a really big place to become proficient at it. Exactly. Um. So she's competed uh pretty heavily. So she's uh com- and won. She has a pretty good winning record. Um. She was at the 2017 World Championships, and there she got silver in all around, which means that like. In gymnastics, there's different events, and then how you do in those events um, gives you an all-around medal. So you can, Mm. like, win the vault and then, like, do really crappy at bars or, like, your floor routine. Mm -hmm. Um, But, like, you still get a gold medal in vault. But if you do, like, well in all of them, you can win all-around. Right. Um, And so she got the silver for all-around. Yeah, so the Commonwealth Games in 2018, she got gold for the team so team canada she got gold for all around and she got silver for the vault her main thing is is vault that's her main sport okay um that's like what she kind of focuses on much like and is that the one where there's like a like a like a brick not a brick but like a stool thing that you like jump over yeah yeah Yeah. so you like and you like hit it with your hands okay so you like run 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 really fast and then you like basically throw yourself at it and then like flip (laughs) a bunch in the air and then land you make a suicide pact between you and the vault (laughs) yeah sounds super cool and then at the pan american games she's she's received like so many gold medals like she's crazy (laughs) gold medals silver medals to be so accomplished at such a young age (laughs) yeah exactly and to do all of this like i mean she started competing like super competitively in 2014 so she would have been i'm not good at math this is not a math podcast how old would she have been seven years ago so 19 yeah so like a teenager and you're just competing at these you know world championship events like at 17 i i would just cry (laughs) i mean i still just cry it's so much pressure and i mean they it kind of it came up recently um i guess a few weeks ago with the uh, french open Mm -hmm. and um osaka is that her last name yeah she had to she resigned from despite the fact that she was like a leader because she was like i 
can't deal with the media present presence yeah. and it's not even like i can't deal it's just like i'm not gonna subject myself to that because i'm not in a good place she's right so now. badass she's so cool. oh yeah and it's just like and the, especially in sports like like gymnastics and tennis there's a very gross aspect oh, to the 100%. media especially if you're a female oh in the sport. i would say tennis is one of the worst tennis media is awful yeah and i love watching tennis and i mean yeah. you played tennis pretty yeah, competitively tennis. it's one of my favorite sports to watch and 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 do for fun but it's i i just i love watching tennis it's mm-hmm. like super fast paced uh easy to follow and just like it's really competitive and, and it's it moves quickly and you can get on a side of someone and be excited to watch them um but yeah the media is just gross especially for women one of my favorite tennis press conferences is actually andy roddick is andy, andy roddick i forget what the commentator said to him but it was like isn't it great to win like two of these whatever it was that he won and right. to be the first, first person, american or something i think i think they said uh, maybe they said first american it was first american or first person and yeah. he was like uh actually venus and serena williams have both yeah so it's i like, don't know what you're talking about he's like i'm not the first yeah um, so in 2018, Ellie Black was named one of the greatest athletes in Nova Scotia. So Ooh. in the Nova Scotia Sports Hall of Fame, along with like Sydney Crosby. And I mean, I guess that, like that makes sense. She'd already competed in all of these events by then. She's under 25. Yeah. Like that's amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Black was actually awarded with the Order of Nova Scotia um, oh on November God. 6th of that year. Aww. So she's and the thing about Ellie Black is that, I mean, she's a Canadian athlete. Canadian athletes are all underfunded if they're not on a professional sports team, and especially yeah. if they're female. Mm-hmm. So this is the kind of recognition that you get. Like, she can't expect to get a massive Nike contract. Like, that's just not what's happening for athletes, especially gymnasts. You know, it is... It's um, a small market sport, and she's in a small market for exactly. it. Exactly. And so, I mean, getting these honors, like, you'd have to think that that's, a, that that's like, a massive deal, mm-hmm. um, being recognized for all of these things. Um and she's the, only the second person under 25 to receive the Order of Canada. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, and the other person is Sidney Crosby, and he was the first. <laughs> um, yeah, so she's... Both Nova Scotians, thank you very much. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's the Order of Nova Scotia, so... Oh, I thought you said Order of Canada. <laughs> Never mind. Kind of, kind of four Nova Scotians. <laughs> and she's obviously regarded as the most successful Canadian female gymnast of all time, based on all these accomplishments. Yeah, so I think she's had a really impressive career already. I don't know what she's going to do beyond that. She does a lot of work with young gymnasts. Um, so I was looking into kind of some of her philanthropy uh, work that she does. She's pretty. She seems pretty cool and down to earth. I mean, you can only tell so much from interviews. Obviously, you have to be yeah. pretty, you know, dedicated and intense to be uh, a professional athlete. I mean, to be going to the Olympics, and she is slated to attend. The Summer Olympics, whenever, whenever they, they happen. happen. <laughs> yeah, I was going to um, ask. And like... so I hope that they happen, you know, sooner rather than later because, uh, as I said, gymnasts do have a pretty kind of short, there's a kind of stagnant amount of time that they can really be successful in their sport. So I hope yeah. that she doesn't miss out or, you know, have an injury or anything um, that could that could hinder her from doing that so but yeah so i just wanted to shed some light and see if you had a minute to talk about nova scotian olympian and sports star ellie black yeah and in closing out talking about ellie uh she's actually for whenever the olympics happen she's going to be the closing ceremony flag bearer for the oh, summer that's olympics. cool it's kind of nice i think there's you know there's a responsibility being the flag bearer coming in because like everybody's getting hyped but you know it's kind of expected that she's going to do well like that the country is recognized that you know she could she could be a medal winner at these olympics and so she's kind of chosen to you know carry that excitement going out and i think that's pretty cool what a good happy got a minute thanks. i like that one thanks buddy do you want to know what i have a minute i do what do i need to have a minute for? you need to have a minute for so I th- i've already said that i wanted to do a have you got a minute on this okay it's one of my favorite tv shows okay. and i think you already know what it is i don't you don't i don't think well This is a show that I showed you. It's kind of old, but it is Departures, a television show. (laughs) Oh, God, this could be like a two-parter. So Departures is not a new TV show. Um, It aired between 2008 and 2010. Mm -hmm. So it has three seasons. It is very much, it's the epitome of like a Canadian TV show where 
people you people don't know the show and then you talk and explain it and they're like oh yeah i would randomly catch that on like the outdoor li- lifestyle network or something yeah, it's definitely a cult favorite yes um you got me into it and i've watched season one and two yeah i think we've watched through like seasons one and two together. and i think we started season three maybe yes uh, we've definitely started season three yeah yeah, because we watched the Russia episode, and that's yes. crazy. So in premise, it is a show about – so there's these two guys from Ontario who have, like, their own film production company, and it's very much like a documentary travel show. And it's them being themselves, and they have, like, actual, like, problems happen to them while yeah. they're on the road, so you learn a lot about them and, and they their have lives. actual friendship fights, and they have <laughs> yeah. actual really drunk nights. And it's you see really them get fun. so drunk, uh, especially in the they? first season. Where are they in that episode where they get wasted? Somewhere. Oh, in Mongolia. Yeah. In Mongolia, they, like... Because it's snowy. Because they, like, they learn about different, like, drinking traditions and different places, and it's just, it's so bizarre. But, like, they... It's so these, who are they? Because so they for the audience who doesn't know. To to start, like in the first episode, you meet like Scott Wilson and Andre Dupuis. And so they have this like film production company. They met in film school, whatever. But Scott and Andre, they're like huge fans of travel. And so they're like, This is the only time in our lives where we're ever going to be able to just we don't have enough commitments that we can't just drop everything and travel yeah. for a year. So they call up well. Scott calls up his high school friend, Justin Lukacs, who at the time is living in Hawaii. And he's just like, hey, do you want to drop everything and travel the world for the year? And Justin is like, sure. And so the first episode is them all meeting up for the first time. Andre is mostly behind the camera. And then Justin and Scott are like the hosts of the show. Which let me just say, it's a damn shame that Andre spends most of his time behind the camera. Because when he comes out, and maybe that's what makes it good. Yeah. He's behind the camera so much that when he comes out, usually when they're drinking, <laughs> um he's just oh you just want to pick him up and take him home and... he's just this like <laughs> cute little presence because normally he's behind the camera and so he's just like yeah. you can tell he's probably just like a little more quiet than them oh. but then when he comes out he's just like it's yeah. just the best and they scott and justin get so excited when they can get andre on camera to yeah. do something he's this cute little quebecois boy <laughs> and he's just lovely and so the first episode and the first season it's them like they travel Every episode or sometimes like a two-part episode is about a different country. So they go to like they travel Canada and then they travel through Jordan and India and New Zealand and all these different countries. And then as the the first season of the show is very much like this is the only season there's going to be like we're traveling the the world for a year and this season is the, the show. But they pick up it again for a second season or third season so really they're on the road for like three years of their lives which is crazy and they don't do easy travel they're not going to like a beach resort and then chilling and drinking it's like we're gonna travel with this reindeering her- reindeer herdsman of Mongolia, yeah. and we're gonna learn about their lifestyle. Or they go to like North Korea in the third season, yeah, um, which Linnea hasn't seen yet, I seen <laughs> so that. I won't spoil what happens. But spoiler that's though, it's crazy. <laughs> oh my God, it's crazy. Which it's also really funny when you see. I'm sorry, I'm too excited about this. It's really no. funny when you see the dynamics of the cast because especially first season, like Scott gets off on travel like, oh and he's is, like a pro at it yeah like this is what scott wanted to do especially japan don't get me started about scott in japan. <laughs> total weeb <laughs> he uh there's actually a like a sub series kind of spinoff that came up after of scott like just in <laughs> just japan. In japan just but, scott just in japan <laughs> anyway he loves japan but justin is oh, how can i describe justin <laughs> especially first season justin he's so sweet he's yeah so naive and kind he loves animals and children (laughs) and 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 cookies and he finds them everywhere (laughs) and he also is the pickiest eater he does not want to eat anything so to take him he won't even eat like sushi like sushi is too weird which is maybe like because it's like kind of mid 2000s so maybe it's not so but he does get to this point where he like eats whenever he eats something weird like even (laughs) like tuna steaks scott was scott's like so proud of him scott's like you did it like (laughs) you didn't just eat cookies today yeah yeah and so you very much get the vibe of them being like high school friends and 
they've clearly taken very different paths in life yeah. but they could always get back in a room and just kind of pick up where they left off yeah but they're very different people and so like justin knows exactly how to push scott's buttons oh. and like get him frustrated and annoyed but at the same time at like the root of the show is very much just trying to take what a country gives you yeah like don't go there because you want to see this thing. Go there and just see what the place has to offer yeah. and like take whatever opportunities you can to do something that you'd never be able to do again. For sure. And par- watching the show is amazing and it's so funny and so relatable and enjoyable oh. to watch. But then the other part is like, I could never do that. So I'm happy someone else did it because it's really no. interesting to watch. Travel to me is far too stressful to ever 100%. sideline a year of my life just to be like I'm gonna live out of my backpack for a year well, turns out I don't like doing that <laughs> and it is it is interesting because Scott is so like this is his thing like yeah. he just he loves this and you can tell especially first season Justin is like you know very gung-ho in the beginning and then you kind of get to a point where Justin's like this is a lot <laughs> yeah. um, like this is really stressful like yeah like, there's I definitely moments this. like the like language barriers that they face like yeah. they don't travel with translators or like no. that first season especially is them just going where they i think they could like crash on a couch like they just go yeah. places where they know they have friends where they know so that they, they can have, like hang out yeah like one acquaintance somewhere yeah who can like help them out it's really good i and cried in multiple episodes yeah it's just like and especially <laughs> so justin emotional. because you see how much him just seeing the world changes his life yeah you just see him mature so quickly as a person yeah and he goes from being like where's the nearest bar where can we like get a drink whatever to being like this is an amazing cultural experience and i'm like like in the first season i think the first time is they go to india and there's some they're in a big city on the Gange River and they're at one of the huge crematoriums that are on the Gange because it's like a big part of their religious traditions to just like cremate and put the ashes in the in the the river and you you watch Justin be like I'm watching people get cremated right now he's just like absolutely like taken aback and he's just like he's like it's terrifying because it's not something I'm used to and then there's like this little boy that comes into the scene and he's like but at the same time there's like so much life here yeah. it's like look this little boy who's like <laughs> playing in the river oh. and it's just like it's so cute justin is so like he finds the children he finds every-, the ch- every episode he'll make like a cult of children and they'll just follow him everywhere <laughs> and they follow him and he makes them like say english phrases and it's so funny (laughs) it's so funny and and animals yeah he always finds there's actually one episode and where are they the episode where he and scott get in the fight because justin was off like loving a llama or something and scott went and did the bungee jumping oh it's in new zealand yeah like so they go to new zealand and justin justin's big thing is that he wants to do any like daredevil thing and new zealand is like the world capital for like bungee jumping and whatever of stupid crazy stuff yeah and scott is very type a and like just like is very nervous about doing that he's like i'm not gonna do it like why would i do it if i don't want to do it and at some point like justin is away and scott is like fuck it if i don't do it now i'm never gonna do it so scott just like does it does the bungee jump they catch it on camera whatever he doesn't do it and then he tells justin he did it and justin is just like no you didn't it's like you didn't do it and he's like how am i it's like i'm so you mean i'm just gonna watch this back on the tape and it's gonna show you bungee jumping and scott's like yeah he's just like dude that's messed up like i was so i was like rooting for you to do it and you didn't even like wait to let me watch and scott's like i couldn't find you where were you and he's like i was with a cow i was like i found a goat yeah it was a goat i chased a goat (laughs) and and it's this but what's so great about the show is that you have these real moments of like friendship and humility and just like relationships of people and like the relationships they make with strangers and the relationships they have with each other and ugh. 10 out of 10 recommend to anyone yeah it's it's the perfect kind of reality show where it very actually does feel very much like if you and three friends yeah picked up at your whole lives and just traveled for three years yeah you would become super super close yeah and also there would be moments like that where you're just like yeah i wasn't even thinking about how this would impact you 
Yeah. It's and very quintessentially Canadian in that way. And also you see, which as a Canadian who has traveled to outside of my country, people in airports friggin' love Canadians. Like, yeah. you have a Canada flag on your backpack. They're like, oh, do you know John from Newfoundland? Like, well, come <laughs> with me. Like, my granddaughter went to school in Ontario. Like, you can, like, hear. Here is, like, $100. Like, <laughs> people are just so nice to Canadian. It's true. It's, like, it's it's a real thing. Um, And you see them have those experiences where people are just so excited to see Canadians. Um, yeah. It's cool. Yeah, and it, it feels it makes me feel like if that's our brand ambassador like out there, like that makes me feel pretty good. Well, my aunt and uncle met them in Switzerland. Oh, really? Uh, Switzerland or Sweden? Where have they been? Um, I don't think they go to either. Iceland. Iceland. They do go that's to Iceland. Where. I knew it was <laughs> one of those. Places. Anyway, my aunt and uncle met them in the airport at Iceland in Iceland at like while they were filming the show, mm-hmm. and I remember they would have been like the age that we are now yeah and they were so excited and like came back and that was like the highlight like they had pictures <laughs> with like they had pictures with andre and scott and justin and they were like oh this is so cool yeah that would be a celebrity meeting that i genuinely don't know what i would say because like i watched that i i found that show with like uh, a former partner like he showed it to me and I was watching it and just starting to get into it as I moved to Halifax. Like, when I watch that show, yeah. I feel and, like, it feels like that time in my life. Yeah. And it was, like, a hard time in my life. No, it wasn't a particularly good time for me. No. I didn't, like, I wasn't particularly happy yeah. <laughs> at that time. Um, and so it was kind of one of those, like, this was my reprieve right. from having to, like, deal with shit and feel yeah. bad about myself. Yeah. And, like just getting to watch people and especially a show where the goodness of it is just in being yeah like it's not in yes like obviously there's like payoff from all this planning and stuff but like the best moments of the show are when they're just kind of there yeah relaxing being as present as possible exactly um and so i yeah if i met one of them i genuinely don't know what i would do (laughs) like i'd probably Um. freak out just, yeah. I also love because they like they'll be traveling around. And there's so many niche Canadian references oh. to like they wear like a tragically hip T-shirt. Yeah. Scott has this Joel Plaskett ashtray rock T-shirt. Yeah. Who's like a Halifax they, rock they artist. They drink propeller. They drink propeller beer in the first episode, yeah. but it's one of those things where the logo is blurred because they can't use it. But yeah. you like I know what that logo You're like, is. That's propeller IPA. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just yeah. like that's hilarious. That's amazing. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's just like it's so cool, and it's a show that ends really well too. I won't spoil the ending, I know, I but it's it it's one of those things where they're like, we know we can't do another season of this just just because we like can't. Yeah. <laughs> like even if it did get renewed, I don't think we could do it. Yeah. Um. So it it ends with them knowing it's going to be the last time, oh. and so it's just like it ends in such a good way. I love that. Um. And yeah, like Andre and Scott stayed in the yeah. film industry after that and then justin went and did justin things to be honest i don't know what his job is but i follow him on instagram he lives in bc yeah <laughs> he got a kitten oh. um <laughs> so <laughs> it's like cool to see them still like doing things like that yeah. and it's so funny i was scrolling through just the wikipedia page to see like if there was any like information that i like didn't know um other like it's been it was nominated for a bunch of canadian film awards which yeah. are the gemini awards um and most of them are for andre for like photography yeah. and direction um and a few clearly like someone who was must have been kind of behind the scenes doing a lot of the editing yeah um but <laughs> they did get nominated for best host in a lifestyle uh, or practical information or performing arts program or series <laughs> but it's just scott oh. <laughs> Not Justin, <laughs> just Scott. Uh, no, Justin is Justin is the most relatable by far. If it was <laughs> yeah. just Scott, but it's like, uh, it is funny because I always say like oh, Grace does all the work and she does everything, and this podcast would not exist without I'm her. I'm Scott, but I feel like that like sometimes, and you're like, no, but it wouldn't be funny just talking to myself. But I'm like, oh shit, I'm the Justin. You're the Justin. I'm like, I'm the Justin. And I'm here for a good time to have like life revelations and like get excited. <laughs> And, and that's my job yeah. and uh yeah <laughs> and i love that it yeah. really is they have a special special relationship and uh 
it's so cool to watch the growth uh, of all of them, really. And it, it's you were saying about cinematography because I'm gonna say, oh the yeah, cinematography is gorgeous. Yeah, you 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 first go because you're like, oh, this is a beautiful TV yeah. show, and then you're like, oh, there's so much heart. Which is why it's so funny because that episode I was talking about where everybody gets hammered, <laughs> the cinematography <laughs> is shit, and it's just so funny because you can see it through the episode. And yeah. I, I hope that there was some thought put into that, but it starts off and it's like the regular gorgeous like shots. And then it slowly turns into, like, old cell phone, like, trash recording. <laughs> well, there's just a moment where they, they're they in this tent in Mongolia. Yeah. And I guess it's just, like, just different drinking traditions. And I don't know if they're just, like, let's fuck around with these white guys or if it's, like, genuinely this is what we do. Yeah. But they're, like, they, they're drinking, like, pints of vodka. Oh. And then they have to eat the, like, entrails of a yeah. reindeer because like the whole premise is you have to like eat the whole animal and so this cool. happens to be what's for lunch is like entrails and then <laughs> andre is the one drinking the most and so when they like come out of the tent andre like this the camera just goes like the white balance is just yeah. insane <laughs> everything is just over uh over <laughs> and it's like the stumbly because he's like walking with it so it's like stumble stumble and everything's just like white <laughs> and then you see him correct it and it's like mm, mm, yeah. just, like manually correcting <laughs> the white balance <laughs> and it's like oh my yeah. it's uh but yeah there's those there's those very very quintessentially you know like friends on a trip and it feels you feel very involved in the process when those moments like that happen yeah on screen, which is cool. yeah and i like that yeah that's it's it's involved in the process like yeah. m the show isn't about getting to a destination it's about like what you do when you don't have a destination yeah. specifically yeah. and there's definitely some episodes where they're more like goal oriented than others but yeah, like sure. in the mongolia episode the back half of the second episode where they're in mongolia is just them like we're just going to go to the Gobi Desert on, like, four wheelers and see what happens. So fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, such a cool episode. Yeah. And they travel the way I think everybody envisions themselves traveling. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, everyone envisions, like, yeah, you, like, live out of your backpack and, like, you always have a roof over your head. But yeah, who knows what could happen. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure a lot of that is, like, tactical editing and stuff. But oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. But. Oh, that was a great one. Everybody should take a minute, take an hour, take a couple hours, and binge watch some Departures if you've never yes. watched it. If it's on have, Amazon Prime. Yes, and if you have, go back and watch your favorite episodes. Yes, I. that is the one show I would love to come back. It's like, I, I need it to be them. I need it to be all three of them still doing it. Yeah. But just like a, a brief kind of, a, a three episode whatever. Yeah, they should just go on a trip somewhere. Yeah. Just to one place. And I love because like clearly it's, like scott's like instagram is like scott underscore departures like yeah. he's like i know where you know me from like, yeah. <laughs> that's it <laughs> shout out to the departures boys it would be unreal to have you come on the podcast <gasps> listen <laughs> i don't know what i would do <laughs> i have listen. i have such like a perpetual like love for them Oh. As because as Linnea and I have said, we love when men are just emotionally vulnerable. Oh well, that's the thing, and that's the whole show. That's the show. It's these men being emotionally vulnerable, and I also want to take a mo moment to give a huge shout out to Scott's eyebrow ring. Uh, Scott's eyebrow ring, Justin's like frosted tips, oh, yeah. and bandana, circus yeah. season one. Yeah, um. Andre wearing so many layers all the time. Yeah, yeah. He's always got like a buff. Andre's also got some piercings else. going on. Does he? I think so. I don't see him enough. Don't see him enough. I know. Got to get them. Got, get Andre on camera a little bit more. Thanks for listening to another Have You Got a Minute. This is maybe my favorite to date, but I think I say that after every episode. <laughs> uh, it's just a fun, it's a really fun format for Grace and I, and uh, we hope you guys are enjoying it too. And if you want to find us and follow along, if you aren't already, you can go check out our Instagram, which is at Minute Women Podcast, and our Facebook is under the same name. And then we have Twitter at The Minute Women. Uh, you can also go check out our website, which is updated with all of our episodes and a little bit more info about Grace and I, plus all of the sources that we use for the traditional uh, Minute Women episodes. And you can find that at www.minutewomenpodcast.ca. 
And make sure you're subscribed to the podcast on whatever platform you listen to us on. Make sure you leave us a rating, a review. That's the best way you can support the podcast other than buying merch. Like our Pride merch was was out throughout the month of June. But there's a bunch of other merch that you can check out. They can find that over on Tee Public. Uh, just go over there and search for Minute Women Podcast. We put out new episodes every Wednesday. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. And tell all of your friends. Word of mouth is the best review. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.